Relationships. How do you stay loving and forgiving regardless of what happens? Well, the first aspect is to remember that what we love is the person, not the action. The one we forgive is the person, not the action. What ends up happening when you say, you know, we see the good and the bad, it's it's good and bad actions, it's good and bad tendencies, it's good and bad characteristics, it's good and bad aspects of ego development. Being loving and forgiving does not mean, oh my God, that's so beautiful when you slap me like that. I just, you know, God, I love that. Could you? It's, it's so wonderful. Thank you. That's not, that's not where we're going. It's about staying forgiving of the being who has harmed you in word, in deed, meaning intentionally, unintentionally. Because the being is not the action. Just as, I mean, has anyone in here ever said or done something that you wish you hadn't? <laughs> Has anyone in here not ever done or said something that you wish you hadn't? Okay, so, right, so we all have. We all have. And the prayer that we would all have is that whomever we had said or done it to could see us as the fullness of our being and not that one action or word. That's when we feel, when we feel remorse, when we feel guilt, that's, that's the, the conflict inside is how did I say that? How did I do that? That's where we feel guilty because we understand, well, that, that's not all of me. That was my fear. That was my jealousy. That was my anger. That was whatever it may have been, but that's not the sum total of me. And so in the same way, when people speak to us, treat us, do things to us or not to us or just in the world, that we would deem the good and the bad. How can we see those as actions or characteristics of a much fuller being and forgive the being? Because otherwise, see, here's what happens. Otherwise, we carry it with us. Loving someone, forgiving someone, it's not for them, really. I mean, the fact that it benefits them is a kind of a byproduct. It's really for us. Because otherwise, I carry through my life what you said or did. You said it or did it once. I carry it forever. You hurt me once. I hurt myself over and over and over again every time I think about it. Over and over and over again when I cannot eat and digest my food because I'm so upset about it. When I cannot fall asleep because I'm so upset by it. So we have to do that for us. Now again... Loving and forgiving the entireness of a being does not mean that we always choose to put ourselves back in that situation. You know, you could be walking through a park and get bit by a dog. Okay, well, you're not going to hold it against the dog forever. You're not going to run after the dog and try to bite it back or kill it. But you're also not going to need therapy to get over the internal reaction to having been bit by a dog because you understand it wasn't about me. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The dog couldn't help himself. 
he was triggered or he had rabies or, you know, whatever it may have been, came between the mother and the pups. And yet, tomorrow when I walk through the park, I'm going to take a different route. So loving and forgiving does not mean that I disregard the impact of what they did. It means I don't hold on to my anger. I don't hold on to feeling like a victim. But I also fully understand my power to create my life. And that doesn't necessarily mean that just because I love and forgive the beingness of the dog who bit me, that I need to keep taking that path through the park every day. So that's, that's an individual situation to have to look at and see, okay, you know, what is the bad? When the bad is general, you know, human nature stuff, people, people get upset, people sometimes yell, people, you know, sometimes don't treat us as respectfully as we'd like to be treated. That's, it's human nature, it's relationships. I have yet to hear of any relationship in which that never happened. But that doesn't mean that you put yourself in a situation of being harmed. Physically harmed, emotionally harmed. So that's, that's an individual basis though. But even, even if you choose not to physically be in that situation anymore, you still have to find the love and the forgiveness. The two things are actually, actually separate. I love and I forgive so I, I can stay in peace. So I can stay in being. Depending on the situation, depending on the bad, I may physically also stay. Recognizing that it's an opportunity to learn, it's an opportunity to grow, it's an opportunity to overcome my own ego, my own anger, my own judgments, my own fears. Or if I'm actually being harmed out of love and respect for the temple that is me, I may choose not to be in that situation anymore. But in either case, I understand that the being who says or does these things is a much fuller being, a divine being, just as I am a fuller being, a divine being, than just the words or the actions.